The reason I'm calling Mrs. Ashley is that I would like to place you in nomination as my first ambassador to Romania. Is she really that essential to us? The controller can think of no one else who would suit our purpose so well. Yeah, OK, I'm on my way. Quite frankly, Mrs. Ashley, the president is hoping that you might reconsider his offer. I do solemnly swear I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. You are an amateur, Mrs. Ashley. If someone were going to pay you off, they should have made you ambassador to Iceland. I got a present for you. What? The... Madam Ambassador, welcome to Romania. My name is Bill McKinney. Nobody cheats on me. I accept this letter of credence from your president. And I announce that you're now officially the American ambassador to my country. Oh, and make sure the children are there. This should be a, <laughs> a festive occasion. I believe that uh, fireworks are traditional on the 4th of July. Mary Ashley and her children will be killed. dispatches on your desk. Here's a dossier that was hand-delivered by Army Intelligence from Mr. Stuckley's office. Everything we know about Romanian officials. Everything. Hmm. Personal things? Yes, ma'am. But I'm sure they know all there is to know about you. Won't get them very far. Good morning, Madam Ambassador. Well, here we are again. I hope you slept well. Do you spend your life walking into places unannounced, Mrs. Slade? Lesson number one. Whenever possible, the ambassador starts her day by having coffee with her deputy chief of staff. That's a little present from me to you. Thank you. Sugar? No sugar, no cream. I brew it myself. Great stuff. Is there a lesson number two, Mr. Slade? I'm glad you asked. This machine, this is a shredder. 
I know what it is. Last night when you went out, you left some papers on your desk. By now, they've been photographed and sent to Moscow. What papers? Oh, a list of cosmetics, of facial tissue, of toilet paper, other personal things you ordered. Oh, shaky. The cleaning women work for the Securite. They're grateful for any scrap of information they can get, and they're ingenious at putting things together. That also goes for the servants that work at your house. How do you like it so far? What? The coffee. It's coffee. Thanks. You see, the Securitate here is the KGB and the police force wrapped into one. One out of every three Romanians works for it in some way. Not that they get paid. That could at least raise their standard of living, which is the lowest in Europe. Glad you came? Yes. Yes, I am, Mr. Slade. Mr. Maltz is here. Have him come in. Mr. Maltz. Hi. What's up, Eddie? Got a tough one. There's an American girl here, a student, University of Bucharest exchange student. She's running some problems Excuse with the Romanian. Excuse me, Mr. Maltz. Did you wish to see me? Oh. Uh, right, yes, we've got a problem. There's an American girl, 19. She was arrested last night for possession of drugs. That's an extremely serious offense around here. What kind of drugs? Marijuana. Just a joint, she says. She's a student, and right now she's scared to death. What will they do to her? The usual penalty is five years. And what can we do about it? Well, you could always use your charms on the head of security. Her name's Hannah Murphy. She says she was framed. She may have a point. Why? Well, it seems she had an affair with a Romanian policeman. Dumb, dumb, dumb. They spent the night at her house, and then he turned her in. He turned her in? I've been trying to tell you. We, Madam Ambassador, we are the enemy here. It may be all buddies and hands across the sea because we're trying to woo them away from Russia. But when you get down to the gritty, they're still communists, and we are the enemy. The kids come from 28 different countries. And there's this Italian guy that keeps staring at me. He was staring at all the girls. He was not. Should I ignore him? Do you want to ignore him? No. Ask if he's nearsighted. Once you get him talking, he won't stare anymore. Oh! What is that? It's a dead Romanian frog. We're going to dissect it tomorrow. They got a great science lab. Tim, take it off my desk. Now. Well, you two are doing pretty well. No big problems? No. Mike took care of us. Mike? Mr. Slade, he told us to call him Mike. What does he have to do with school? He showed up there today. Yeah, he introduced us to the teachers, didn't he tell you? No. Yeah, he knows a lot of the teachers. He even knows some of the kids, too. He's really a neat guy. Don't you think so, Mom? Hmm. Yes. Yes, very neat. And uh, I've arranged a visit to the Ivan Steelian prison at the end of the week. I'll let you know when that's confirmed. Thank you. You got the first three parties start tonight. Three? <laughs> you got 21 altogether this week. That's impossible. Wow, well, with 75 embassies in Bucharest, they're always celebrating something. Dorothy, would you tell Janklo, Thompson, and Maltz I'd like to see them? They're in conference right now. Conference? With whom? With all the other counselors. Are you saying there's a staff meeting going on without me? Yes, ma'am. Are you telling me that this isn't the first time? Yes, ma'am. Tell me what else is going on here that I should know about and don't. Well, um, they are sending cables without your authorization. Good afternoon. I won't take up much of your time because I know how busy all of you are. It's come to my attention that senior staff meetings are being held without my knowledge. From this moment on, anyone attending such a meeting will be instantly dismissed. It's also come to my attention that some of you are sending cables without informing me. Yesterday, Mr. Hatfield, you sent an unauthorized cable to the State Department. I've made reservations for you on a plane leaving for Washington at noon tomorrow. You are no longer a member of this embassy. The next time anyone in this room sends a cable without my knowledge or fails to give me full support, that person will be on a plane back to the United States. That's all for now. Mr. Slade. I'd like to thank you for being so kind to Beth and Tim at school yesterday. No problem. They're good kids. How did I do? I'd say it was neat, but not gaudy. The shortest and most effective staff meeting I think I've ever witnessed. <laughs> well done, Madam Ambassador. Thank you. I 
you will note, gentlemen, that events in Romania are proceeding on schedule. I believe you've had the opportunity to look over the controller's recommendation in reference to the Argentinian known as Angel. The price might appear to be a bit steep, but of course we are now dealing with an incident which may have enormous international consequences. Are there any questions? Any comments at all on the recommendation? Well, make no mistake, the contract will specifically call for the assassination of Mrs. Ashley and of her two children. May I remind you to observe the usual precautions upon leaving. Thank you, gentlemen. that a friend had given me. It was just one joint. When I woke up in the morning, he was gone. The police showed up. They stood there watching me while I got dressed. And they brought me here. Five years, they told me. <laughs> and now listen to me. I'm going to do everything in my power to help you. You understand everything. Please believe that. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be okay. You're wasting your time. The girl is guilty as hell. Well, you can't just walk away from her. What's what's his name? Who? The head of the security. Estrasa. Captain Aurel Estrasa. Good afternoon, Madame Ambassador. Good afternoon. You wish to talk to me? Yes, please be seated. Thank you. I would like to discuss the case of Hannah Murphy. Oh, yes, 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 the uh, drug peddler. Uh, forgive me, my English, not very good. I can understand you. You see, we have strict laws here with drugs. Oh, I'm pleased to hear that. I, I wish we had stricter laws in my country. Good, we agree. Yes, anyone who sells drugs deserves to go to jail. Yes. Hannah Murphy, however, did not sell drugs. She offered to give some marijuana to this man. It is the same thing. No, no, not quite. The man she was with is a lieutenant on your police force. He smoked marijuana, too. Has he been punished? Why should he be? He was merely gathering evidence? I understand he has a wife and three children. <laughs> the American girl tricked him into bed, so to speak. So to speak. The girl is 19 and the lieutenant is 45? Age has nothing to do with it. We're quite alone. I had this room checked for any recording devices before you arrived. So? Does the lieutenant's wife know about her husband's affair? Why should she? It sounds to me like a clear case of entrapment. Captain, I, 
I think we should make the whole affair public to the international press. Well, there would be no point. Why? Well, because I see... Because the lieutenant just happens to be your son-in-law? Certainly not. Did he get a promotion over this? We only wish to see justice done. So do I. It would seem that your son-in-law has trapped other young female tourists, even sleeping with him as he did Hannah Murphy. However, I... I see no reason for your daughter to know how her husband conducts himself. No, I... I think it'd be much better for all concerned if you quietly released Hannah Murphy from jail and I shipped her back to the United States. What do you say, Captain? You are a very... interesting lady. Thank you. I'll expect Miss Murphy in my office this afternoon. I'll see that she's put on the first plane out of Bucharest. I will use what little influence I have. Yes, I'm sure you will, Captain. Madame? So where is he? Where people don't find him. Well, tell him it's confirmed, at least for Bucharest next week. More. What? And uh, he don't like to do this bad thing with the children. He want two million pounds. English pounds. Ho, 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 ho. Well, uh, maybe we forget the whole thing, huh? Okay, sure. Okay. Okay, okay. I'm gonna have to check it out. Good. Hey. My baby, he's out of town. If you know what I mean. Get out of here. <laughs> Good morning. What do you know? Just couldn't wait for my coffee. Those people outside at the gate, who are they? Uh, Romanian Jews, for the most part, waiting to file applications for visas. Why don't they go to the Israeli embassy? Well, they think we have a better chance of helping them. They're wrong, of course. It's a cat and mouse game. Ionescu lets a few people out of the country every year. Well, there must be some way we can help them. We're not talking about getting a drug case dismissed here, not this time. No, this is government ironclad policy. Here you are. Thank you. Hmm. Tell me, Mr. Slade. Mike? Do you think it might be possible for us to have a little better relationship? Sure. Why not? I, I was thinking this morning, uh, well, it occurred to me, that you might like to go to the theater this evening. I'd like that very much. There's a Romanian ballet company playing. Karina Sokolai, a big star. It's supposed to be pretty good. That sounds very nice. Well, I have three tickets you could take Tim and Beth. Thank you. Hello. Yes, just a moment. Dorothy. Yes, Dorothy. Churchman? Oh, let me take that. Dorothy, tell them that nothing has changed. We still can't help them. Right. Thank you. Those people have a chance to uh, go to a church in Utah, but they'll never get the visas. Here are your tickets. I'll have Florian pick you up at eight. Thank you. I don't want to go. Do I have to? Of course not. I. It's my Italian friend. Who? From school. 
Oh. I invited him to dinner. Is that all right? There's a million servants here. Oh, of course. Where's Tim? In his room with Ivan. Ivan? A friend from school. They're helping each other with their homework. I don't think he's going to want to see any Romanians dance either. You're probably right. Have fun. The American Ambassador. A lovely evening. I need your help. I, I cannot stay here. I have spoken out too freely. I, I will not be allowed to dance here much longer. I want to come to America. Thank you so much for your kind words. 